Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo Group. In January 2017 I made a video for Affinity Photo and Serif's earlier program Photo Plus um, which basically did this image of changing a photograph into a sort of drawing and putting it onto a blueprint background. Um, it was sort of the best I could do at the time um, and it was nowhere near to the Photoshop tutorial which I was trying to emulate mainly because Affinity Photo and what have you didn't have filters and, and still doesn't have filters um, that Photoshop did and I had trouble sort of emulating it. I recently rewatched that video and I thought well, maybe I could probably do a bit better now. Um, so this is th what I did then and this is the version I've got to now where the image is a bit more see-through. You can see bits of the blueprint in the background so it looks like the image is in the process of being drawn and coloured in. Um, it's still not that good as compared to the original Photoshop tutorial but I'm hoping that it is a better version than I did originally. I mean if you want to go for this version I would suggest you can you can look at that first tutorial I will add a link to that in the description for this um, this particular video. So this is what we're going to aim for so first of all we're gonna, you're going to need a blueprint background now I got this one from a website called um, Wallpaper Cave I think it is, yes Wallpaper Cave um, again I will add a link to this particular image but you may have your own wallpaper uh, blueprint image that you want to use or some, uh, some other background maybe and then we want an image of something that you want to put onto this blueprint. Now, I got this particular Harley Davidson bike image from pixabay.com, and again, I will add a link to this in the description. But you could use anything you can use a car, a bike, you can even use a, like a toaster if you want. The image is what you use, is up to you. Now it would be helpful if the image is already a PNG with no background but if not you want a sort of an image like this where the background is all one colour and is easy to remove um, if it's you know in a very busy background you're going to have a lot of trouble cutting that out so once you've got the image that you want to use we now need to sort of cut this out and what I'm going to do first is come to the flood select tool and I'm going to have a contiguous ticked and I'm going to lower the tolerance down I'm going to say about 10-11% um, the tolerance is how much of this background this is going to sort of eat into the image so the lower the tolerance the less likely it is going to sort of creep into the edges of the image depending on the image you're going to use that tolerance may need to be lower or you may be able to get away with a slightly higher tolerance so I'm just going to click somewhere on this white background and at this like 10% it's pretty much got most of the outline of this bike which I'm quite happy with now pictures of like bikes and cars and what have you you're going to have holes that where the background is visible through them I mean if you're going to do like a a toaster obviously you're not going to have holes and you won't need to worry about it um, so I'm going to come onto the click on the add button and I'm just going to zoom in a bit here and then I'm just going to click in these various holes 
to select each one around here one there one there and that last one let's do come to subtract and just subtract that bit of the bike that was highlighted uh, selected there. Now you've got part of the handle here which we don't want selected. Oh, let's see, I've just lost the selection for the background there because the tolerance is, may need to be lowered a bit more because it was coming into that bike handle. So let me go back to add, lower the tolerance a bit more. Let's come down to 7% and click into there yes yeah, so that seems to be a bit better and just subtract a little bit of the that's up here yeah see so even at five even at that percent it's coming a bit lower still let's try four percent yeah, that's better. See, it's not selecting that part of the bike there, nor that part of the bike there. So I can go back to, uh, on Add and then just pick up these holes that I've not yet selected. Just have a quick look around. Make sure I've not missed any holes and it's not selecting part of the bike that I want. I think that's going to be good enough for this. You can take your time and get a better selection. Oh, there's one little hole there. There we go. So I'm going to press Control and Zero to zoom out. So that is pretty much all of the outside that is selected. Um, now what I want to do is actually select the bike, not the outside, so I need to reverse the selection. So I can come up to select and then down to invert pixel selection or you can do control shift and I and I'm guessing on a Mac it's a command shift and I, I'm not 100% certain. But it's easy to just use the select menu and come to invert selection. So that is now the bike that is selected and not the background. So what I'm going to do now is, all right, I'm going to press Control and J and that will put the bike image in its own layer. Because if I turn off this background, as you can see, this is now got no background it's uh, separated so I can press control and D now to get rid of the selecting area now if you wanted to keep this for some future project I would advise that you would export this now as a PNG file and with no background so you will always have this particular image now without a background so you could, if you have done it like I've done here and you've still got it open, I can now copy and paste this directly into the blueprint image. So what I'll do is I'll right click on that layer and copy, come to my blueprint image and then edit and paste. Now I'm gonna, at this point, I'm gonna come to the move tool and depending on the size of the image you're working with, you may need to resize it, reposition it to where you want it on the paper. Um, you've got to resize it, hold down the control key or command key on the Mac, I think it is. And then you can resize it from the corners and it will keep its size and pers perspective. And reposition it, just click anywhere in the middle and move it around. I'm quite happy with the size. 
and I'm going to be quite happy with where it's positioned. So what I want to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'll just right click on this layer and come to duplicate or you can do control and J. So we now have two versions of that background layer. And just to make this slightly easier, I'm going to rename this one and call it Pencil. Because we're going to change this into a sort of pencil type image. And to do that, I'm going to come up to Filters, down to Detect, and then Detect Edges. Which will make this into a black and white image. But again, we need to reverse this so it's more white with black line images. So again, I'm going to come up to Layer and Invert. You can even you can just do Control and I or just click on Invert. So that will change that into the more white with black lines. Now there is still some color in here which I do want to get rid of so it looks more like a pencil drawing. And to do that, I'm going to use the HSL adjustment. So I'll click on this little circle down here, pick HSL, and I'll just drop the saturation down to zero, or minus 100%, to lose all the color. Now, this will be affecting both, or all the layers, but if I click on merge, it will merge it just into the layer that's below it, so it will only affect that pencil layer. Bringing back the blue of the background. So we now have the three layers, the pencil layer, the original background, and the blue paper background. So now at this point, you can sort of muck around with the blend modes um, of this top layer and you can get all sorts of different effects I mean this one here which is dark and you've, you've got the sort of original image and it's got sort of been highlighted around the edges by the black lines that from the layer that we are changing the blend mode of um, multiply is very similar So it's really a case of finding one that you like the look of. So you can go through them all and find a sort of image that you like the look of. Again, you could save this image at any point. I'm going to put it on Color Dodge, which is the one I quite like. And again, if you wanted to, you could get rid of the blue background and export this as a drawing, as a PNG drawing, and have that all, at all times like that image. So let me just bring back that blue background. This is the beauty of this sort of tutorial is that you could export at all various points along the way and have all sorts of different images from one sort of project. Right, so next thing we want to do is to I'm going to group these two bike layers so I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the upper bike layer so both of those are highlighted right click and come to group so that has now got um, those two layers joined together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this particular group. So again, I'll right click, come to duplicate, and I will just um, hide that for the moment and re-highlight this layer, uh, this group here that is below. And what I'm going to do is use the erase brush tool. Now, I'm going to have hardness set at zero, and I'm going to lower the opacity down, let's say to about 10%. And 
and I'm going to use quite a big brush but as soon as you start using this it will automatically add a layer mask to the group um, so you are actually erasing via a layer mask rather than erasing the actual pixel so you can always bring them back again at some later point so I'm just going to click a few times around just to start the erasing process I'm not going to go too mad just yet just so you can see that what is happening here before I bring back this top layer to make that visible and what I'm going to do is change the blending mode of this group at the top here and I'm going to change that to um, color burn and then I'll re-highlight the mask from the group below so I'm going to I've opened up the group and if I click on the actual mask itself I am still deleting or painting onto the mask and hopefully you can now start to see through the image and see the blue lines starting to show through your drawing now how much you want to delete is up to you Now one thing I did forget to do was to change the blending mode of this lower group. Um, I'm going to change that to color dodge. So this group is color dodge and this one is color burn. So let me just re-highlight this mask. I'm still on the erase tool and I'm just going to just click over this a few more times now if you wanted to if you wanted to sort of lose a bit more of this color here you could highlight the top group and just click on that and like I said before it will automatically add a layer mask to this particular group as well and then you could start to just start to erase a little bit of the color and outline of that layer as well. How far you take that is up to you. Um, I will leave it like that because you can see the blue lines coming through the image but you still got the basic outline of the image so it does look like it is sort of pretty much drawn and somebody's just started to color it in so you can now save and or export it as it stands again you could lose the blue background and save and export it as a PNG like that if you so wish so this is my revised version of this tutorial still not quite up to the Photoshop one um, until Affinity Photo starts to get a few filters like Photoshop there's not a lot I can do about this particular project until then so thank you for watching and goodbye